This is WNCT, 9 on your side, news at 11. Coming up, the president is taking a hard line with Mexico, why he wants to close the southern border. Plus, the city of Jacksonville is facing a deficit in this year's budget, how city leaders plan to turn things around and get finances back on track. And an annual night to benefit the homeless. We take you inside the banquet at the Greenville Convention Center tonight. Good evening, I'm Angie Casada. Thanks for joining us. Ken Watling and Shayla Reeves are off tonight. New tonight, President Trump has threatened to close the southern border if Mexico doesn't, quote, stop all illegal immigration coming into the U.S. Our Dylan Huffman spoke to local leaders today about how that could impact us right here in eastern North Carolina. And he's back in the studio with their reaction. Dylan. Just like Democrats and Republicans on the national level, the ones here at home don't seem to agree on much. I spoke to the chairman of the Lenore County Republican Party and the chairman for the 3rd Congressional District of the Democratic Party. We'll keep it close for a long time. I'm not playing games. President Trump laying down an ultimatum. Mexico stops illegal immigrants from coming to the U.S. or he closes the southern border. Either they're going to stop. They have the strongest immigration laws anywhere in the world. And we have the weakest, the most pathetic laws. And Trump said on Twitter he would close the border as early as next week. Here at home, Democrats and Republicans are weighing in. I absolutely agree with the president and support him if it makes us a sovereign nation and protects our citizens. Stephen Reagan is the chairman of the Lenore County Republican Party. He says stop the illegal immigration and then talk about border security. Once and for all, stop it. Then you can actually sit down, okay, this isn't a problem any longer. Now, let's. what are we going to do about it? On the other side, Chris Hardy is the chairman for the 3rd Congressional District of the Democratic Party. Well, my initial reaction is that the president is pandering to his base. He says closing the border is Trump trying to make his supporters happy rather than putting forward true policy. He's going to close it next week if Mexico doesn't solve the problem. A, I don't know that it's Mexico's problem to solve. B, I don't know that it is solvable in a week. But both acknowledge that a closed border would impact trade here in eastern North Carolina. Corn, soybean, beef, and pork products, chicken products which is so prevalent as uh, part of the economy here in eastern North Carolina. To threaten to close the border is impractical, but more, re more relevantly, it's irresponsible. And it will cause economic hardship across the country. But is it worth it? Absolutely. Which is costing us more. Would it be a trade or would it be the cost of housing, feeding, and caring for illegal immigrants? A lot of you have been weighing in on this topic as well over on our Facebook page. Let's take a look at a few of your comments. We're going to start with Angel who says, do it. Democrats are trying to import illegals to vote and weigh down the system. Robin says, so according to Trump, shut down legal ports of entry to stop illegal immigration. Then why do we need a, a wall? June says he does a lot of talking, but there's never any action behind it. And then Robert says, do it now should have been already been done a long time ago. And you can join in on the conversation as well over on our Facebook page. In the studio, Dylan Huffman at 9 on your side. Dylan, thanks. The leader of the U.S. Small Business Administration announces that she's stepping down. Linda McMahon announced that the news on Twitter earlier today. McMahon, a native of New Bern and a graduate of ECU, said in a statement that she will resign from her position, her position on April 12th. McMahon added, quote, while it has truly been the honor of a lifetime to serve our country and this administration, it is time for me to step down and return to the private sector. The city of Jacksonville is looking at considering budget cuts in the upcoming fiscal year's finances. Unexpected expenses, including Hurricane Florence recovery, have caused a $2 million deficit for the city. City officials will have a workshop on Tuesday, April 2nd, to discuss city budget concerns and possible solutions. Financial challenges that will be brought up in the workshop include a $300,000 increase for retirement, along with a $350,000 increase for city health plans. So Solutions for these issues will also be presented. Decisions will be finalized by June 30th. 
Today is National Vietnam War Veterans Day, and organizations across the East are commemorating those who served our country. Jonathan Forte of the VA says from 2015 through 2025, they're celebrating the 50th anniversary of the war, marking the 10 years troops were actively deployed in Vietnam. The VA Health Care Center in Greenville passed out cookies and care packages to veterans today. Inside, there were handmade scarves, information about VA benefits, snacks, and more. To thank our Vietnam veterans and welcome them back um, from service abroad. Uh, many of those veterans didn't receive the care packages and the thanks that some of our Iraq and Afghanistan veterans get today. More than 7 million Vietnam veterans are living today. The Mission Barbecue in Jacksonville honored Vietnam vets today by providing them with free meals. At Mission Barbecue, not only will you find barbecue and the classic sides that come along with it, but also memorabilia from wall to wall honoring soldiers and first responders. Restaurant employee Carol Torres says she has been a part of the Vietnam Recognition Day for the last two years and enjoys showing the veterans how much they're appreciated for their service. Our big thing is, is to thank the, uh, the first responders, uh, our veterans, our active duty military the, for, for what they do and their families as well. Mission Barbecue's main mission is striving to serve those who serve. The annual Homeless Nights fundraising dinner and auction was held tonight at the Greenville Convention Center. The event is held to raise money for the Community Crossroads Center, which is the only homeless shelter in Pitt County based in Greenville. A dinner and an auction helped raise funds for the shelter. Bob Williams explains the importance of the shelter to the community. Well, it's very important, especially, you know, when the weather outside is cold or is very, very hot. Um, it's the last place that, you know, people want to come, but it's the last place oftentimes for a lot of people here in Pitt County and Greenville. The event was emceed by our very own WNCT Shayla Reeves. Well, a traffic alert now out of Craven County. More work is expected on Highway 17 in Newburn over the weekend. The State Department of Transportation is working to bring the highway up to interstate standards. Multiple entrance and exit ramps will be closed. Tomorrow and Sunday, the westbound exit ramps onto Glen Burnie Road and the westbound entrance ramp from Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard will be closed. The outside right lane between the two ramps is also expected to close, but detours will be in place. Well, let's toss things over to Chief Meteorologist Jerry Jackson now for a look at our forecast. Jerry, how are, we, how are things looking? And so far, so good, Angie. As we head into Saturday, we're going to be looking at plentiful sunshine out there and very, very comfortable temperature readings. We've got a cold front that will eventually come into view. This will probably not reach us until sometime later Sunday evening. That's the next best chance of any widespread rain. Once the front moves offshore, we'll dry out temporarily on Monday before a new consolidated area of low pressure heads our way with another round of showers on Tuesday. So in the short term, our hour by hour forecast, mostly clear skies through early Saturday morning sunshine during the afternoon maybe some fair weather clouds filtering the sunshine from time to time but overall uneventful weather at least over the next 24 to 36 hours download our first alert mobile weather app and always track the latest changes tonight partly cloudy overnight lows in the 40s tomorrow Saturday beautiful weather mostly sunny even warmer than today highs will be not only in the 70s for inland areas but also along the coast will be teetering right on the edge of small craft advisory conditions with regards to seas though seas average between three and five feet, one foot for the sounds and your inland first alert seven day forecast. 60% chance of showers on Sunday, only a 20% chance for Monday, but we ramp up the rain potential again by Tuesday. At this point, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, all looking good with sunshine and hopefully we'll put together another nice weekend next weekend. We've got a nice little string I going know. now. A little consistency, Jerry, so I I'm like excited. It. I like it. Awesome. Thanks and thank you for joining us. Have a great night, everyone.